Hailey Bieber's Road Skin has officially been in business for a year, and in celebration for her anniversary, Hailey's been releasing specials on her brand and doing interviews. She talked about the start of her business, where they are now, and she even addressed some issues that they've had along the way. She also brought up how drama affects her brand, and even had something to say about Selena Gomez and everything that happened earlier this year. It's a mess, so let's get into it. Hailey Bieber launched her skincare brand Road a year ago, and even though the brand has seen a lot of success, there have been a lot of bumps along the way. From being sued for the use of the name Road, backlash over putting yet another celebrity beauty brand on the market, and issues with the products themselves. This year has definitely been a bit of a journey for Hailey, and she's finally opening up about it. She released a video and did an interview and talked about everything. Let's start off with her video, which she titled, The Making of Road. In this video, she talked about the whole timeline of Road, from having an idea, testing different samples, and putting together a team. She said herself, Road wouldn't be what it is today without the team of people that she has behind it and attributed a lot of the brand's success to her team. She also addressed the issues that some people were having with her peptide lip treatments. A few months ago, a lot of people were posting reviews of her lip treatments on TikTok, claiming they had this really grainy texture that didn't feel the best. Why is this so grainy? Mine's grainy. It's grainy. Like, this one's never been grainy. I'm upset. I was really looking forward to this. You can even, like, see... I don't know if you can even see the granules. I can like see the granules on. It was uncomfortable to wear and right away customers knew something was wrong. Haley said that that issue was coming from the fragrance they were using. Apparently when it would ship and travel through different temperatures, it would affect the consistency of their ingredients. In our peptide lip treatment, we were experiencing an issue with having a bit of a grainy texture. It was popping up in some of the batches. Our sweetener, when it would, would travel and maybe get cold, it would settle at the bottom of the peptide lip treatment a little bit. What is up with their thickness? It's the fragrances. Each fragrance impacts the base. No, I think this feels good. I really try to get as close to perfection as I feel like I possibly can. When we weren't able to achieve that, I like immediately want to figure out how to fix it. I know that issue was a pretty major one for Road. For a while, all that would come across on my For You page was people complaining about the grainy texture, but I haven't seen any in a while, so hopefully it's fixed now. The next thing Haley did was an interview with Bloomberg in a video titled, Haley Bieber on the Celeb to Entrepreneur Playbook. The narrative behind this interview was how the internet kind of made these people who they are today, but also just how quickly the internet can tear them back down. They started off by talking about the amount of hate that Haley receives. Haley said that she really doesn't like a lot of the narratives floating around about her that make her feel really upset. She admitted to having a love-hate relationship with TikTok specifically, and finds it to be a very nasty and negative place for her. I can see why Hilly feels that way about TikTok. TikTok is where all the drama was born between her and Selena. It's where she posted that video that ended up being taken as shade towards Selena. It's where all the videos live showing where she may or may have not copied Selena. And not to mention, the comments on TikTok can be pretty ruthless as well. I will say though, Hilly's comment section has been pretty positive lately. I don't know if that's because it's heavily moderated or what, but it's definitely an improvement compared to a few months ago. They went on to talk about the start of her brand and just how quickly she sold out at launch. As you guys know, we've talked about this before, but a lot of brands will launch a limited amount of product, make it look like it all sold out, only to launch more a few weeks later. It's pretty much the oldest marketing tactic out there. It creates this fake urgency and makes you feel like you're missing out and pushes you to press purchase without really thinking about it. The interviewer asked Haley if that was the plan for her brand, and Haley said it wasn't. Apparently, they were projecting a certain amount of sales, and the demand far exceeded that number. It just completely far exceeded everyone's planning and expectations. Haley was then asked how she plans on standing out from all the other celebrity beauty brands out there. One of the biggest criticisms that Haley got when she launched her brand was people being like, yet another celebrity brand with their name slapped on a product that they probably don't even care about. 
I feel like Haley didn't really answer the question. She just said how she wants to keep her website simple and easy and not have like a million different products for a million different things. I noticed with being a consumer of skincare and beauty was like if I went on a website and it felt like I don't even know what to choose at this mm -hmm. point. Our approach is just always going to be that one of everything good. It was also brought up how a lot of these brands end up not working out and how we've seen a lot of stories about that lately. I mean, just within the last year, we've had Morphe stores get shut down. We had skincare by Hiram and Item Beauty kicked out of Sephora. So many of these brands aren't working out. Haley was asked if she feels like she missed her timing and I feel like you could tell that she wasn't happy with that question. Do you worry at all that you missed the wave? like the wave of the wave of celebrity beauty brands when the economy was going well and mm -hmm. people felt like they had a lot of disposable income to try new things. I don't feel like that's the case. I do feel like there was a fatigue. I felt like when I announced the brand, of course, there was people that were like, oh, here we go. It's no secret that ever since COVID happened, beauty sales have dropped massively. People don't have the money to go out and blow on all these new brands every day, even if they wanted to. We're living in times where people are working like 50 hours a week and still struggling to pay their rent and support their families. It is a very risky time to be launching a new brand, but Haley doesn't see it that way. They slowly moved into the recent drama and started off by talking about Haley wearing her Nepo Baby t-shirt. When Haley was seen in the shirt, there were some people who found it funny, but then there were the people who didn't love it. Does she really think this is a slay? Hailey Bieber wearing a Nepo Baby shirt is not the serve she thinks it is. I get it, she's trying to be in on the joke, she's trying to be ironic, but we're really not joking. Not only do we want you to recognize that you were raised with extreme privilege, but we also want you to not sit in your bathroom with Gwyneth Paltrow and claim that you had to work twice as hard because you are a Nepo baby. Haley got a lot of backlash over the Nepo baby stuff because she had Gwyneth Paltrow on Who's In My Bathroom, and Gwyneth was saying how Nepo babies have to work two times as hard to prove themselves, and Haley said that she agreed. So the Nepo baby stuff was already a bit of a rocky conversation when it came to Haley. During the interview, Haley said that the t-shirt was just supposed to be like her comment on the Nepo baby stuff that people were saying about her. She said it was her way of acknowledging it. Now let's talk about the big drama that happened a few months ago. I was kind of shocked when I heard the interviewer bring up what she called the eyebrow drama. I'm probably too old to understand why this is an issue, but here we go. There's some ongoing drama between you, another celebrity, and eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And you reach out to her saying you've been getting death threats. Mm -hmm. and she told her fans to stop. Now, we all know it wasn't just eyebrow drama. The drama started because Haley posted this video and a lot of people thought it was about Selena. Things only escalated when Kylie posted this screenshot of her and Haley on FaceTime. People thought it was a shady response to Selena's video saying how she overlaminated her eyebrows. It ended up being because Kylie was releasing Kylash, but no one knew that at the time. The eyebrow thing was only one of so many situations. Haley went on to actually use Selena's name and she said she doesn't think the drama is about her versus Selena. She thinks it's about hatred and twisted narratives that people create and she even mentioned how crazy it is that this is all over a man. I don't think that this is about me, Haley Bieber, and Selena Gomez. This is not about mm -hmm. this pitting between two women and division between two women. It's about vile, disgusting hatred that can come from completely made up and twisted and perpetuated narratives. I don't like this whole idea of team this person and team this person. I'm just not about that. It's such a frustrating old narrative, like two women being pitted against each other over a man. Because of a guy? It's right. awful. I hate it. I've hated it since the beginning. Time and time again, I don't know why I keep having to say and we keep having to say that there is no issue and there is no problem. Obviously, TikTok is absolutely blowing up talking about this portion of the interview. A lot of people are shocked that Haley's PR team would even allow a question to be asked about Selena. The hate was just starting to die down a bit and bringing Selena up again only gets people talking about the whole thing all over again. Haley's team to stop letting interviewers ask her this question or prep Haley so she can give better answers. 
this interview was supposed to be about Haley as a businesswoman with road skincare, but instead we're talking about a non-existent love triangle over eyebrow drama. It's also interesting to me that I don't think the interviewer even said Selena Gomez's name, but Haley brought up Selena by name. Why would you bring up another businesswoman when discussing your own business line and your status as a businesswoman? I believe Haley and her team think these questions allow her to vindicate her name and play the nice girl, but it really just makes her look like that she can't get attention unless she brings up the this non-existent triangle. In this interview, she says the feud between her and Selena doesn't exist. But you don't hear Selena talking about it. You don't hear Justin talking about it. And if this feud doesn't exist, then Haley, stop talking about it. At the same time, the hate Haley received, I'm sure, was very overwhelming for her. She has every right to say what she wants to say, and she is right about fans making these narratives about things that might not even be true. Haley and Selena do seem to be on good terms now. They've been liking each other's posts, Haley stuck up for Selena when she was getting hate in her comments. It's definitely been nice to see after the mess that happened earlier this year. Let's just hope it stays that way. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.